one thing that you tried to gloss over, and we're not having it, because I cannot wait to get into this, is the fact that you believe Chris Benoit should be in the Hall of Fame. And I'm not going to go off on you, because I don't personally agree. However, I want to hear your reasoning, and we'll give you the platform. I want to hear your reasoning as to why you think Chris Benoit should be in the Hall of Fame. My reasoning that Chris Benoit should be in the Hall of Fame is because, in my opinion, now mind you, this is my opinion, I think that he is one of the best technical wrestlers to date. The man was a freaking machine. And he would put his body out on the line day in, day out, and he would give everything for this company. WCW, WWE, it didn't matter. He was a man's, he was a wrestler's wrestler. He didn't care who he was wrestling for. He was wrestling for you, the fans. He was doing everything he could to make sure that you, the fans, and the company were getting the best out of him every day, bar none. What do you think, Carl? I'm mean, Canadian. I mean, you know, I, uh, Canadians tend to, <laughs> they tend to support Chris Benoit even more so. But let's not ignore the elephant in the room here. Obviously, what he did is inexcusable. It was a terrible act, even if, even be, though we know the reasoning, it was wrestling that did kind of make that happen with the headbutts and the brain trauma and all that stuff. I could induct him solely on the fact that because of what they learned from his brain, that's why the wellness policy and the concussion awareness is the way it is now. When people get concussions, like they they make sure a hundred and fifty percent, two hundred percent that you are good to go, because they don't want another Chris Benoit situation to happen. That being said, I definitely agree with Jay Miller here. He is I I loved watching Chris Benoit as a very young impressionable wrestling fan. WrestleMania twenty when he won that triple threat when he won the world title. Fuck, go back to when he won, entered first in the Royal Rumble and he won it. That was one of the biggest moments for wrestling that I had ever had the pleasure of experiencing as a kid. Like it was just, it was fantastic. The way the wrestler or the way the commentator sold it, the way JR and King were like, you know, he finally won the big one and all that. And then Eddie comes down and they hug in the ring and the confetti was coming down. That was a really powerful moment for me. But. Uh, it, it's it's a really does he go in or does he not? If you have if you're right, Jeremy Miller stated that he thinks Chris Benoit should be in the Hall of Fame, and probably if he have, am I right in saying Jay that if you were in charge of the Hall of Fame, you put Chris Benoit in? Absolutely, I would have Chris Benoit in uh, the Hall of Fame, maybe with a little asterisk. I don't know, but he would definitely be in the Hall for sure. Kyle, if you're in charge of the Hall of Fame, does the, does Chris Benoit go in? Yes, because regardless of what happened outside the ring, like all that personal stuff, all the shit that he did do, I believe that in ring, he was brilliant. And I think Chris Benoit, the wrestler, should be remembered. Oh, it's a hard one. Um, I don't believe Chris Benoit should be in all of them. I believe that you can't separate the wrestler from what he did. And unfortunately, that is the way it is. It's an all-encompassing package. And... If you do that, what you do is you set a new precedent. And what you're saying to your society, at least in the wrestling society, is that regardless of what kind of person you might have been or what you might have done, if you have created a legacy for yourself, that means that you can still be immortalized in some way as a hero. If you put Chris Benoit in, you are saying to people that his wrestling career is more important than the legacy he left behind as a murderer. That's how people will view it, even if, like, like Jay Miller says, put an asterisk by it. And I, I appreciate that, and I understand that. I really do. Because sometimes the asterisk is there. But you, what do you do? The, you know, what do you say? Congratulations, Chris Benoit, Hall of Fame. And then, like, in brackets, just so you know, did murder his wife and child. Like, you can't. You cannot put... I loved his career. I thought he was an incredible wrestler. He was very void of charisma. I will point that out. But... WWE, as stupid as they are, 
even they know if they put him in, that sense sets a horrible precedent. And not only that, it will drive away a large proportion of people. If you put Chris Benoit in, think of it from a business perspective. If you're Burger King or Sonic or whoever fucking promotes them these days, Sour Skittles, Snickers Cruncher, whatever it might be, as a prospective client and as somebody who is going to be paying WWE a large proportion of advertising revenue, if WWE comes out and says, yeah, we're going to put this guy in who, you know, the master of the double fucking murder, we're going to stick him in our Hall of Fame. If you're a sponsor, you're saying, absolutely not. Pull the plug. You know, they pretty much forced them to remove Fabulous Moolah from that battle raw. And rightfully so, because she was a sex trafficker. But, of course, we're not allowed to say that because she was historically so famous. But it also, on the flip side of things, if you look at the Hall of Fame, Jimmy Snook is in the Hall of Fame, and he is all but known to be a murderer. So that would probably work in your favour as an argument. But for me, people aren't going to tolerate that. And that, you know, I understand. I feel sorry for Chris Benoit's son. I think it's David, isn't it? Dave Benoit, who was on Chris Jericho's podcast recently. I feel so sorry for him. Even worse over the fact that he looks just like his dad, which is terrifying. He'll never be able to get anywhere in the wrestling business because of that. And that is a shame. If you want to argue to me, David Benoit should be allowed the opportunities. Absolutely, he should. Shouldn't have to suffer for his father's legacy. Maybe carrying a name doesn't help, but hey, that's his choice. But oh, for me, you just can't put him in. You just, I just, I don't see a way that you can put him in without offending or upsetting the majority of your demographic. And if that's the case, you can't put him in. Like that, that's fair. I, I do totally understand that. And just in that, there you kind, you've kind of swayed me. I did very much tie a lot of emotion to this. Like I had said before, like just watching his moments and stuff that resonated a lot with me. But at the end of the day. He murdered his wife, he murdered his son, and then he hung himself. And that's not something that should be celebrated. I absolutely think WWE should be held accountable for his death and his family's death. I absolutely believe that. And I know that upsets people. People are like, oh, he made that decision. Yeah, yeah, absolutely he did. Under the extreme stresses and almost dementia-ridden brain from, that was given to him via wrestling. You know, WWE turned a blind eye for a long time to steal chair shots head and things like that. And it's all very well saying, oh, yeah, well, we've got this wellness policy now and we're extremely diligent in our way that we look at concussions. But you are fucking responsible for Chris Benoit's condition to some extent because you allowed him to go out there every night and do these sort of things, the diving headbutts, the steel chair shots. Other companies are also responsible for that. Promoters, bookers, whoever it might have been who asked him to do this best stuff. And ultimately, people will say, oh, well, he made his own decisions. Don't play dumb with me. The wrestling business, a lot of it was forced upon you in the earlier days. It's quite nice and liberal now for a lot of people, but there was a lot of force there. And you had to kind of make do if you wanted to get it far. To get along, you had to go along. And the fact that WWE has completely washed Chris Benoit off the face of their own earth is fine. I understand why they've done that. But they helped and contributed in some form or fashion to the condition that he would end up suffering. And, you know, I mentioned so many guys. Test, for instance, he had a former CTE when he passed away. Multiple guys do. For me, WWE has basically said, oh, fuck you guys. It wasn't our fault, it's yours. Now, I remember Vince McMahon coming out on those special documentaries and saying, oh, it, it, we didn't ask Chris Benoit to do that. He did that of his own volition. Then we find out, because his brain is donated to science, that he had the brain of an 88-year-old Alzheimer's patient. Of course he was going to do something. It's a ticking time bomb for so long. I have nothing but sympathy for the family and the grievances and everything that was lost because of what he did. But I also believe that WWE, maybe some people would argue that they've suffered in the way that they've lost so many fans and revenue because it really was quite tough for them once this episode happened. I believe it was in 2007. Once this happened... WWE was really up against it and they saw a dramatic decline, not only in sponsorship, advertising, revenue, everything, and now they're sky high, courtesy of hilarious things like Saudi Arabia, and boy, are we probably going to drop a rat on Saudi Arabia at some point. But for me, WWE is partially responsible for what happened, and the fact that they act like they're not pisses me off no end. Because a lot of these things could be avoided with intelligence and foresight. But the wrestling business, as much as I love it, is also one of the most disgustingly political and bent businesses in the world, if not the entire world of its own volition. It can be really fucking murky.
in the world of wrestling, and WWE is the worst offender of them all.